to Paint Bravely, the podcast where you can find a little bit of encouragement, discover new ways to make your hobby more fun, and most importantly, learn to paint bravely. And sometimes even disguise yourself bravely, too. That's right. We have some things to talk about, yeah. That's right. <laughs> All right, so we are recording this right before we go to Adepticon 2024. And yeah. uh, so we've both been working hard to to have stuff ready to go for Adepticon. And uh, I think we actually have a lot to talk about today. So I'm I'm starting this episode with a little joke. I've got a fake beard that I'm wearing right now, and I've got some sweet gamer glasses. I can't remember what these are called. <laughs> the, like, tinted glasses that were big 10 years ago when you're playing games. You're supposed yeah, to, like, yeah. help you not get headaches or something, but... Yeah, relaxes your or like cuts out the blue light or something. Called, you know, like, the, the yellow oh, ones, the HD yeah, ones. These are, they're gunners. Do you remember these? The gunner glasses. But I I do remember. Yeah, that. I remember that. I remember seeing ads for them. They're like, oh, if you drive a lot, you should wear these too. And if you game a lot, you know, it'll make you a better gamer. Yeah, they're yeah. just yellow tinted glasses, and it actually yeah. hurts your head when you game because you, you get the glasses on, and maybe you have glasses already, I don't know, but then you got your, your headphones on top of it, and it's all just squeezing into your head, but actually, anyway, yeah. I'm wearing them as mostly a little bit of a joke here, but I am entering Resin Beast at Adepticon. <laughs> And I have decided to use a pseudonym for that entry. So this episode is coming out after Adepticon, so I could spill the beans now. But yeah. I am entering in the small model category. I have an archer who is doing a sweet power slide down a set of stairs, kind of like Legolas does. So it's a, an archer from Conquest. It's one of the bow chosen from the Nord faction. And... In the normal model, he's got one leg up, like on a on a tactical rock sort of thing, which ordinarily is pretty <laughs> stupid. But I was looking at it, and the angle between the two feet is right for someone grabbing the shield of a downed enemy and riding that shield down a set of stairs like Legolas did in that second Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. movie. And... Uh, yeah, he's he's shooting his bow, counting 41, 42, 43. It is great. It's great. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah I, I decided to build a little plinth to look like a staircase. And so that, you know, is a decorative base that has a little bit of height to it where the, the whole thing fits into the theme of the mini. And I built that plinth out of sprues. I got my old sprue collection i think i used sprues from uh, a couple of rhinos from warhammer 40k and because it, it has a lot of nice straight sprue sections and i mm -hmm. used those to build up like minecraft style block style <laughs> build up my my plinth and then i covered my sprue staircase in a thin layer of milliput and sculpted in some rocks and it looks kind of good we'll we'll see we'll see how it goes yeah but this is a long-winded way of saying that i have entered resin beast and i'm using a pseudonym my pseudonym is bert mabers and uh bert mabers the differences between brent and bert mabers is bert mabers has a fake beard mm -hmm. and glasses and I am planning on wearing this and a stupid cultist robe when I walk from our hotel room at Adepticon down to the showroom floor to enter my piece. Yeah. And I don't know. It, it's not a big deal, but I just think it's a little bit cleaner if the judges don't know who painted each mini. I am in no danger of winning things, but, you know, I've... <laughs> I've graded enough lab reports in my day that I know that it's, it's really just easier if you don't know who submitted what. You're not thinking like, yeah. oh, you know, I kind of like this person, but do I like them too much? Maybe we'll go a little bit harder because I do like this person. I want to be, you know, there's no, no correcting for bias, no overcorrecting for bias. Just, just nice and mm -hmm. simple. Do I like the, do I like the archer doing the power slide down the rocks? Interesting idea, but he looks dumb. So no, Nice and <laughs> nice and clean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's no questions. It's just based off the model alone. Yeah. And yeah. It's not like, oh, Brent did this? Was he trying? 
Oh my god, he was trying. Look at that. Oh my god. Like <laughs> No, there's none of that going through the judge's head just like, "Oh, here is a you know, an amateur painted up an archer and he looks okay. Uh B minus, you know, like just yeah, there you go. That's yeah. what we want. Oh, like, <laughs> I don't know who Burt Mabers is, but maybe they were trying their best. He, he, I don't he know. did all yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that, that's going to be good, though. I mean, it'll have already happened, so I'm assuming it it was good. Yeah, maybe maybe you've There'll already pictures, read yeah. on like three different Reddit pages about me getting expelled and Burt Mabers was lighting <laughs> yeah. fires in the hotel room and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly um i mean it brings up an interesting point for sure for like painting competitions in general because it tends to be a lot of the same people that that enter um which you know it's fine that's that's what they like to do but yeah usually it's a lot of the same judges right it just seems to swap out from yeah. people you know to p other people you know and then they're competing and so on so like i i do like the idea of entering anonymously yeah and just seeing what happens and it's it's not always possible like some people's style is so obviously them that there's mm -hmm. there's no hiding it and you don't necessarily want to but i don't know i i think it's cleaner if you can take some basic steps to reduce that like i am mm -hmm. um not a huge deal one way or the other but like i'm not going to post on social media about my piece until after the the competition like i just think it's cleaner that way if uh you know not doing doing what you can to avoid biasing the judges in any direction and like you say it's a it's a small people group of people who do the judging the the people who enter year after year after year is also a relatively small group of people so there's going to be you know there's there's going to be interesting situations and bias and the feeling mm -hmm. of incestuousness but i don't know if we if you can do what you can to, to minimize that i think that's good like um i don't know like over on golden demon like for there's there's one category as is my understanding in golden demon the the open category where gw mm -hmm. employees can can enter and that yeah. also feels kind of weird but i think it's a a decent compromise that it's one category is like okay here's where the people who work for the company and are office friends with the judges can enter and all the other categories mm -hmm. it's just the the general public so that's, that's a yeah, decent way yeah. of doing things i mean yeah because at least in that case if if they paint like a single model or something then it's like that single model has to be better than every other open category miniature which is usually like hand sculpted insane pieces yeah, you know okay. so like yeah you, you'd have to put in some oh, oh some yeah serious and, effort and you know obviously everyone who wins that are insanely talented yeah <laughs> but but there is that little sliver of when the winner is a gw employee of like it still feels a little bit weird even when you're looking right at the piece and see how amazing it is it still feels a mm -hmm. little bit weird um but yeah no for it, sure it, some of that is just unavoidable in a relatively small hobby where so many people are friends and talk to each other and get advice from each other so yeah mm -hmm. yeah exactly now and even the first year that we were at adepticon i knew one of the judges like that was the only reason he was there mm. you know yeah so i mean it's even for something like that like american golden demon it's like oh there's people i know doing this yeah not that I was entering or going to win, but you know. Yep. Yep. But anyway, this is my first competition entry, and I'm I'm quite well aware of the fact that I will not win anything. But I like the idea of getting some more minis into the case so that there's more stuff for people to yeah. look at, and maybe some more people give it a shot next year. Um, but we we've talked before. I feel a little bit weird about how emotionally wrapped up the the true competitors get in in these painting competitions yeah, yeah. and you know we've said before that like the the unhappiest part of adepticon 
last year was watching the people come out of the of the <laughs> award ceremony yeah and it was like the people who lost like you could see on their face that they lost and the people that won yeah. were like silent and like trying to be yeah, couldn't couldn't say could, anything trying to yeah. be you know as oh, good man. winners and i was just like wow all of these people put in so much effort worked so hard came up with such amazing pieces and like n like a few of them are happy inside but on the outside inside, yeah yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah a few of them are happy inside but on the outside they all look miserable walking out of this awards yeah. ceremony it's just like hmm. god i i'd like, want to just get to the hotel rooms like stash this thing i'll yeah, put it on a shelf yeah. and you can see it there uh otherwise i don't want to talk about yeah. it like yeah. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I suppose it would be kind of that, like, you'd feel really good, but you'd feel bad because, yeah, so many people did put in the, like, in a lot of cases, you know, the same or more effort, mm -hmm. you know, like, man, I, I don't know. Like, I, I did do a Golden Demon piece this year because mm -hmm. um, that's, that's been my goal, right? I want to get something into the case regardless um, because it's it's honestly it's just a fun thing to do it's like oh i can walk around go look at stuff and it's like oh yeah that's that's my model and then like people are looking at it and talking about it and like that's just a cool thing like might as well experience that if you're going to a convention with something like that yeah. you know um this piece is really cool i wonder who burt mabers is yeah <laughs> <laughs> did you see yeah. this really cool thing burt mabers did <laughs> There's gonna be that like yeah, it's it's the Legolas thing, right? Like the uh, yeah, convenience. Yeah, I, th snowboard. I think that's what uh, he was going for. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, the question is though, are you 100 percent done with your piece? Close enough, close enough that I'm not. Yeah, you know, I'm certainly not embarrassed if I'm putting it in under somebody else's name. I'll tell you what. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Yeah. That that might actually be a strap yeah, I've, there. I've like, got one more day. Put it in or someone else's I've name. I've got one more yeah. day to uh, do highlights on a couple more of the colors, and then that'll be good. But yeah, it's nice far enough along that I know it will actually happen. So yep, 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 yep. Yeah. So the, this will be the the best model that Burt Mabers ever painted. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that's what I want to see. <laughs> the question is, do I have um, to come up with a new name next year? That's the... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Brett Members. <laughs> Eat Mopsicle. <laughs> like, yes, oh my God. You're going to take it, aren't you? <laughs> uh, I will now, yeah. <laughs> Man, still... Uh, we, have, we haven't talked about old Pete Mopsicle in a minute. Let me tell Gone you. Gone but not forgotten. <laughs> yeah, haven't seen him around in a minute. I think we scared him off, maybe. With I think they might the have forgotten their login happened. information. Yeah, they'll have to crack, that is to possible, crack their yeah. own password again. Get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Two-part two verification uh -huh. on a phone that doesn't exist anymore, you know. <laughs> have to call customer support at YouTube or it's <laughs> not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> And now, and now it's taken. Like now, the name's taken. No one ever, no one's ever gonna get that. That's again. right. That's right. I should probably see if I can steal it. Godspeed. Godspeed, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. They they didn't check my information. So registering for Resin Beast is just a Google form where they had me put in my yeah. actual human name and and you know information. And then there was just a, a blank space. Would you like to use a pseudonym? Uh, enter it here. <laughs> yes, I would. Like, I got this all planned out. I love how, like, just enough of a thing, right? Like, that that pops up. And they're like, do you want to use a fake name? And you're like, oh, I could, uh, I could do so much with this. <laughs> yes. Yes, I want to use a fake name. I thought about it. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't end up doing Resin Beast, although I filled out all the stuff okay. uh, to register, like, initially. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I did hit that point and I'm like, Ooh, pseudonym. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, my golden demon piece, mm -hmm. I did make into a video and I did post it a couple of days ago. Okay. So it, it will have been up before the, the competition. Uh, look, look at you, uh, trying to bias yeah. those judges. 
Yeah, yeah. That's that's actually. My goal. It's, it's you know, just, I just gonna. I just want to make sure disqualify you. <laughs> the Games Workshop judges are gonna see that you bought the model secondhand. Like you got that from eBay. Right, and did yeah. not Directly give any money to Games Workshop. Like Games disqualify. Workshop did not make yeah. any money off of this. Yeah, exactly. Give it, we'll give you a red <laughs> sticker that signifies like. Yeah. Look, that's that's what I'm hoping for. Honestly, any anything like that. Like it, I would love. I would so much love to be disqualified from a, a painting competition and be like, oh. Okay, you know the, the, that's just that's just free content at that point. Okay. Like, give me the worst reason possible, yeah, yeah, yeah. please. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I mean, I I actually spent a good amount of time. I made two videos on this particular model, and like, I don't know that I've put this much time into any other model. Mm -hmm. And I also painted a, a like a whole uh, backing board and did this like fancy base on it. I kind of see it. I mean, it's already been up, and all of posted i mean the videos up too but um yeah I, I tried to put in some effort and take some of the feedback that i got you know from like last mm -hmm. year to to push some of those things um and like the, the reason that i posted the video before the competition is for one i'm not gonna win a golden demon so i feel like that's just moot it doesn't <laughs> matter <laughs> um and and because it was more about um kind of breaking past the the barriers that I set for myself especially because I base I focus on rescuing miniatures and usually that means like clean up fixing all these things and then paint it and then like if it turns out good that's cool um but never like beyond that yeah. so I've just kind of like sat in this pocket for a while yep. and it's like you know I I don't want to make another video about this because then it's like I'm not doing another thing right a youtube thing i'm not doing another model it's not fresh and at the same time it's like that seems like a pretty stupid thing to to do considering i want to paint this model more mm -hmm. and it is for a competition like i should just put the time and effort into it so i mean i, I spent an extra like 15 hours on it and it looks way better than it did before i mean in like really weird small ways not the overall but you know, I'm pretty happy with it, and I'm I am hoping to get at least the like you pass the bottom shelf check. You know, where they give you the the single green sticker, and they're like, we didn't completely disqualify you, but you know, <laughs> it's, it's second best of that. Yeah. So, I'm hoping for that a little sticker on my card. That's all I want. I believe in you. I believe in you. <laughs> Yeah, that's impressive, though, <laughs> the, the ability to have a model that's pretty much done and then for hour after hour after hour get to another 15 hours on top of what was already there. Like, that's... Mm -hmm. I I am finding that it's easier to do that with competition models, though. Like, I, yeah. you know, a couple of days ago, my model was like, yep, this is where I normally call it good and uh, move on to whatever's mm -hmm. next. But it does help to be like okay i've got a couple of days to make this better and mm -hmm. not have bert maber's first model be a total embarrassment <laughs> yeah he's a, yeah he's an imaginary like at least, man, at least something decent he, yeah <laughs> he has his pride <laughs> <laughs> the pete mopsicle was imaginary uh, and then he and then he became real so anything can happen you might you might have gone to adepticon and seen old uh, bert mabers walking around you know? mm -hmm. It was there. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was, yeah, he was there. Yeah. Um, man, I'm, I am excited about Adepticon though. For sure. What else, what else are you ready yeah. for there? Um, I don't know. What? Do you mean to add Adepticon or just in yeah, general? in general. <laughs> in general? Oh, well, um, I mean, I've been doing a lot of hobby like, cause I've been trying to push to get stuff out so that I can kind of take that block of time off. Right. Yeah. So like I finished this golden demon model and I've been painting 69 second edition Gretchen that I got for 20 bucks on eBay. Mm -hmm. It was the same, it's the same sale that like the dude sent me a message like a week later and was like, um, can you open that box and check to see if my wife's purse is inside? Cause she packed it up and lost her purse and like, it wasn't inside, but that's pretty funny. What do you remember <laughs> to send you 69 Gretchen, right? 
he did okay. and i did count them yeah uh, a couple of them were missing some horns and stuff so i had to i had to green stuff some horns up and rebase one of them but uh yeah painting 69 models is uh, it's more difficult than i thought it would be <laughs> like even on paper it's like yeah that's a lot of models and like but you you put 69 25 millimeter models next to each other and it's not like the biggest pile in the world no. it's not huge but then you start going through it i painted like friggin' like three of them like fully that's it you gotta get your batch going man you, yeah. i know i know so, and I, tonight i was, I'm I was doing telling the myself left excuses pouch. you know yeah, the left pouch on <laughs> yeah, every exactly. one of these <laughs> <laughs> they do have pouches on their left yes they do yeah they're all monopose, right? They're all the same. I actually found out, and I didn't realize this, they were also sculpted by Kevin Adams. Cool. Um, and I've been, like, almost all the models I've got right now and the ones I've purchased more recently are all Kevin Adams sculpts. Like, I got some some beefy monstrosity orcs and, and a bunch of stuff. I just got, like, a set of pirate orcs mm-hmm. from him, so... Yeah, some really cool stuff, and I don't, I don't know why. It's just it's all, it's all piling on, and it's all the same guy. But it's kind of cool to see like the, the history of that and like where it's gone and and everything. Well, you like what you like. That's okay. Yeah, I, and apparently I, I have a, a type. I guess. Uh-huh. I, I didn't, th- I didn't think I would. Makes sense. But I guess I do. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean the, uh, you know, like those those chariot goblins, like those were his course they were i mean come yeah. on yeah i'm excited to, i Picked am excited to get back million. to the the bits box there yeah, yeah at adepticon especially the yeah. goblin one of my main goals is to, to find something yeah. yeah i gotta find the rest of that chariot <laughs> um actually i'm looking for a, a wyvern like one of the metal ones um that would be a, a pretty good find because i have the rider and i need the rest of the the stupid dragon mm-hmm and he's like the spindly little one that looks kind of funky, but you of know, course, what are you gonna do? Of course, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah so metal orcs—that's what we're—that's what we're looking for this year. Yep. Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah. So I've I've been doing a lot of that and trying to just get ahead of the game, as it were. You know, trying to finish up as much of the painting and all the stuff, so that when I get back, it's like okay, I can just like edit this really quick and. And get it out instead of having to cram like a whole video in, in a day or two instead of two weeks, you know. Understandable. Um, yeah. Oh, I I also I painted some uh, Minecraft minis. Ooh. There is a a plethora of Minecraft minis to three D print online. Yeah. Like they're everywhere, and like they're not all made the same, and some are not good. They're bad. I mean, they're... But I have found a few. <laughs> I mean, the standard block is uh, one polygon, right? And it's just Something textures. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it's painted on texture. Yeah. So you'd think like that wouldn't be great because yeah. I've seen like really well painted little blocks and stuff. And it's like, yeah, you go in and you make the little pixels on each block and stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, the figures that I found are like a little bit bigger than like Lego sized. Okay. And they're they're everything is sculpted on it. So like even the little blocks within the blocks oh, are sculpted. Okay. So it's like, oh, okay, I'll just paint this one this color and this one this color and it all stands out properly. You don't have to like line anything up or tape anything off to make the the squares. So, yeah, like uh, I th- I was thinking it was going to be a little more difficult than it was, but like the ones I found were pretty decent. Um and like my my son's been just stupid into Minecraft. Like out of nowhere Death. you know it's like he turned seven and it's like minecraft this is a minecraft house now the children yearn I'm for like, the mines yeah <laughs> apparently apparently they do he is he is all about it and uh yeah so i of course you know i gotta print some minis i'm gonna paint them yeah but he's been into that so i'm pretty all happy right. about well it. i will reconnect with your son <laughs> one of these days because from time to time i wander off and into minecraft for yeah. like four days straight and then and then Jeez. i can go back on with like another year of my life but yeah yeah, yeah. i understand it that makes sense. i understand it yeah no i i had not ever played minecraft okay. 
up until, you know, not that long ago. And now I feel like I know more than I should. Yeah. It's it's not great. It's, it's I, I don't know. <laughs> Compared to all the other games that uh, a young man could get, you know, sucked into, Minecraft is pretty wholesome. Like, it's... it's I mean, that's creativity true. and building and solving problems and exploring. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's I get it. I, 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 yeah. yeah, no, and he's definitely into that. Like, he likes Legos, so like Minecraft feels like a good, you know, in for video games. On the other hand, we've been playing uh, the original Doom, just co op, for like the last month. You can play co op almost every co op Doom. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Cool co-op doom original doom you play up to like four people i think yeah i didn't think that was a thing but like it's a thing uh because i never did that when i was younger all right yeah so we've been we've been shooting some uh some hell spawn and he's like really into that too so it's either like he wants to play doom or minecraft yeah here. But painting minis has been good. <laughs> Raised them right. Yep, yep, yep. All right, back to. I feel. I feel like yeah. it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been you've been painting Minecraft. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a that's the thing with a lot of video games is that there are surprisingly low polygons compared to our minis. Like there was yeah. a time a couple of years ago where I thought like I'm gonna paint some World of Warcraft stuff. And there are right, yeah, there yeah. are like weird janky third party programs to export the character models from the game, and so that mm-hmm. it's that you can make an STL file. And I did that on a couple of characters from World of Warcraft, and then it's like, oh, <laughs> everything about this equipment set is just the the textures. It's all drawn on to mm-hmm. like. Yeah, flat, flat surfaces. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, which is not what we do when we paint miniatures generally. So, you know, in a way, mm-hmm. painting a Minecraft block sounds like a lot of work, especially if, <laughs> depending on how mm-hmm. neat and tidy you're trying to get those pixels. But yeah, it's a a block, mm-hmm. and then you're just trying to paint a custom checkerboard pattern <laughs> onto the wall. Basically, yeah. And 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 not even like a complete one. Right. Like it's a random checkerboard in a lot of cases. Mm. Yeah. Um I did find uh a warden. That's what it is. A warden. Yeah. Um and that model is done like an actual mini. It has a base on it and everything. It's all sculpted in there and together. And that was that was actually really cool. I did that in like a comic book style. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's super bright and it's got like these bold color shifts and, you know, the highlights, it's like a big highlight and then a littler highlight in that thing. Nice. But that layering is, you know, it's really noticeable. So it still looks kind of, you know, yieldy pixelated games and stuff. So yeah, I think you can do some different things with that and it, it definitely changes the way that you think about painting a mini yeah i'm gonna get hard into cell shading one of these days probably this year i'm gonna get really hard into (laughs) cell shading my my instagram keeps popping up people are doing repaints on like dragon ball z toys and stuff like that oh and the Mm -hmm. the comic book slash cell shading technique of just a couple of just a couple of colors like this is the shadow color this is the midtone this is the highlight mm-hmm. there are hard edges between them and just the confidence mm-hmm. of being like no here's just the hard highlight uh, right here here's like yeah. a, a weird jagged shape of shadow like yeah <laughs> um yeah exactly yeah uh, and then you get that sharpie out and you ooh, finish it up wonderful yeah wonderful yeah. um let's see here so i'm you know, getting ready to go away for almost a week and want to try to get a video out before I leave. And the Mm -hmm. one I've been working on is I picked back up a video that I abandoned a year and a half ago. And (laughs) if you've been listening to this podcast, you might have heard me grumbling about Dark Eldar and trying to play 40K. There's like a titled episode about Warhammer sucks. Is it? It's it's like a title. It's an actual title. Yeah. (laughs) There was a a long, long discussion about that over multiple episodes. That's what I I thought. That's what I remember. That was a while back. And anyway, I 
My friends and I played in an escalation league. We only got three games in. Well, I think they got four games in. I I quit after three, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're like I'm not going to win anyways. I'm not. I'm not coming. I'm not showing up. <laughs> uh, I think I had something better to do that day. I don't know. Anyway, um, uh, yeah. And so I've got sixty. Speaking of sixty nine, I've probably my probably is pretty close to sixty nine Dark Eldar warriors over here painted in a in a bone armor scheme. They're not quite done. They're they're mm-hmm. very close done, and. Yeah, filmed a whole video about this Escalation League, all the painting on these minis, the the three games I was in, and actually wrote a script, recorded the voiceover, almost finished editing the video, and that was a year and a half ago, and I never posted it, because like, I was, I was finishing up the edit, and I was just realizing how bitter the video was, because I, I was not <laughs> having fun playing Warhammer 40k. <laughs> You're just yelling at the game the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it it starts oh. out like pretty calm and reasonable, normal Goober Town Hobbies video, and as it goes yeah. along, especially game two, game two, you may remember oh, I lost forty nine out of sixty two models. <laughs> yeah, on, like on, turn one or whatever. Yeah, literally top like of their turn heads one. Were poking yeah. out just a little too much. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> and and that's when the video really took a turn, but. Yeah, I I was just getting more and more frustrated with the actual game. And so the tone of the video was just getting more sour, more (laughs) grumpy. And eventually Uh, the video was almost done. I was just like, I can't post this. Like it's, it's too, it's too negative. (laughs) negative. I don't want to put that, that energy out there. And anyway, I, I was thinking that I need, I want to get a video out before I go away for, for a week, just so the reset mm-hmm. the timer on how long it's been since the latest goober town hobbies video and I'm like okay i can take this one and give it like an introduction like look i know this is bitter but like it's funny now in hindsight it's funny like look at this <laughs> yeah. and laugh with me <laughs> yes <laughs> so uh, i mean looking back that far ago yeah. and yeah that that is that, that's funny i mean i thought it was funny then but yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's just it's just the way the video like spirals downward, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> just getting more unhinged as it goes. Yeah. It's like day fifty three. <laughs> I hate this so much. So we'll see if we'll see if I'm able to actually finish that out and and get it up. You'll you'll know by the time this podcast comes out whether you you're able to watch that video or not. But that's that's something I've been working on here. Um, it happens sometimes. Sometimes I, I've got a lot of footage that's never been seen for whatever reason or the video's not done yet, mm-hmm. but I'll finish them all up eventually. Uh, eventually, uh, yeah. So, oh, yesterday I kept myself busy. Yesterday slash three weeks ago when you're hearing this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is not put a timestamp on Yeah, yet. sorry. Sorry, my bad. Keep this evergreen here. Now, I went to... Yeah. Especially because the name of the event is the Ides of March. I went to the Ides of March tournament yesterday. <laughs> all right, all right, yeah, all right. Yeah, not, not to date that. That this episode or anything, but yeah, there's a there's a tournament had both Age of Sigmar and 40k up in coastal mm-hmm. Maine, and I was the paint judge at that event, and it was fun. And that was an event where there were a lot of people who had spent the time to learn the game of either 40k or age of sigmar and since they mm-hmm. knew what they were doing it seemed like they were all having a pretty good time uh yeah you know, I caught a couple of people here and there it looked like maybe they weren't but like most of them looked like they were having a good time <laughs> and uh yeah, yeah they had a, a little painting competition and it was on me to pick the the best army for age of sigmar and also to pick, uh, they had three categories, large model, small model, and squad for just a straight mm-hmm. up painting competition. And I was in charge of picking the winner and the runner up on those. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, I get a little bit nervous about that sort of thing because there can mm-hmm. be a lot of personal preference in there, you know, very, you know, subjective kind of decisions, but for better or worse, this community had a serious painter <laughs> and someone who was serious but not quite as good. And and that right. made things nice and easy. 
<laughs> that's that's nice. It takes a little bit of that yeah. stress away. Cause man, you never know. Like people people definitely get heated about sure. it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it it was a situation where yeah, it would be pretty hard to argue about who who the winner and the runner up were in in mm-hmm. the small category and the squad category. Um eh, the squad category maybe could have gone either way, but like the the sure. every everything after position 2, it was pretty clear that they were after position 2. There there was a lot of cool stuff mm-hmm. like um I one of the things I really liked about that event is that I was able to talk to a lot of people who had entered models and tell them all the cool stuff that I liked about what they did. Like there were tons of tons of great ideas and like clever ways of mm-hmm. using color. They're like, oh, I like this, I like this, I like this. You're not gonna win because look at that guy over there. But like, yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they know it, and that's fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's like, man, I really yeah. like this model. You sh- you should paint the eyes. Like I believe in you. You can paint the eyes, but like uh, you see that guy over there, um, definitely painted the eyes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, painting eyes is overrated. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. Fine. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, that was that was a really good experience. And you know, I mentioned it was in coastal Maine, which is one of the many middle of nowhere parts of Maine. There's the coast mm-hmm. of Maine is very large, and it's just a ton of small mm-hmm. towns. Some of them have lobster shacks where you can buy your lobster rolls and stuff. Um, Makes but sense. During the Ides of March, it's a pretty quiet part of the world, and um, it was mm-hmm. awesome to see that there is a new, uh, new. What am I trying to say? Store, new game store out in Rockport, Maine, mm-hmm. which is. Yeah, one of those places where you don't think that it'd be able to sustain a game store, but hope hopefully yeah, yeah. they're able to. Um, like other stores, I know they're supporting their their model by having online sales, like eBay sales, mm-hmm. um, in store in person store plus eBay store sales. So that is the Treasure Trove Keep, and I wanted to mention them just because the owner Roger seemed like a good guy. But also, it turned out that they started that store by buying an auction of an old storage unit that had the contents of another game store that had been the, that storage unit oh, for man. like 15 years. <laughs> um, so they got a lot of, apparently, like from like third and fourth edition of oh, wow. you know, like back in that era. Mm-hmm. And they got a good deal on that and that kind of jump-started the store and uh, mm-hmm. got them started. But I found out that the, the game store that seeded that old storage unit was the first game store i had ever been to which was the keep oh geez. yeah so like the first warhammer models i bought were from the keep at the mall or actually might have been casablanca comics anyway they but very early on i was at the keep <laughs> at the mall and which just go with that yeah Sounds good. which but the keep was designed as like a kiosk in the shape of a castle like the four corners of the oh, kiosk yeah, okay. like had the towers yeah. and everything. <laughs> um, and it was the best mid mall kiosk I've ever seen. Like the cell phone kiosks, you know, don't have anything on the keep like the you know, Right. Yeah. <laughs> the, the knockoff Oakley sunglasses, sunglasses, sun, don't, don't got nothing on the keep. But anyway, mm-hmm. at one point, eventually it went out of business and all their stuff got put into a storage unit and 15 years later, R- Roger bought him out, and then he started the Treasure Trove Keep. He put the the keep as the last word in the the name, and up in that's kind of yeah, nice, yeah. Up in coastal Maine, and so uh, anyway, I'm always happy when a small store is opening instead of closing. So that's uh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Plus, there's a mm-hmm. spiritual successor to a store I I cared about that closed a long time ago. So, <laughs> yeah. oh man, that's pretty cool. Not bad. Yeah, I mean, finding that much stuff like in a in a storage locker that's from that era, like mm-hmm. that stuff must have been worth a fortune. Yep. Like those boxes, you know, you, even a, a single squad of like uh, Necromunda or something in, in third, fourth edition, forty k era. Sure. It's like back then it was thirty five dollars. Now you go on eBay and you buy one of those, even used for like two fifty. Yeah. No, I think he I think he got a good deal on that and uh the 
had some had some good helpers helping him run an event. There were a bunch of guys up from actually had driven as far as Boston. Um, I think uh, our buddy Martin Orlando has traveled much much farther up the coast to play with some of these guys in in Maine before. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that was he was he was there. Not this time. Not this time. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, he's been before, and I think he's gonna go again to uh, our related group. But yeah, it's it's nice to see the people who live in relatively unpopulated areas able to actually find a game group. And even if they do need to drive an hour mm-hmm. or whatever the case is, it's like it was cool to see middle of the nowhere have a tournament that had they had they were prepared for fifty on each side of AOS and forty K. I think it was more like thirty or thirty five on each side. Yeah. But still that's a lot. That that's still pretty yeah, good. That's, that's real good. Yeah. Um Jeez, yeah. And so we'll I'll mention it uh, here and then maybe mention it again beforehand on the podcast next year. And we'll hopefully grow a little bit year after year. I'm I'm willing to drive up the coast to, to do a paint judge again. Like that was surprisingly yeah. low pressure. They did a good job of <laughs> already deciding beforehand who was going to be first and second. But right. Actually, in the large... Well, in, until a new contender yeah, shows the, up. The know? large model category, actually, the the best painter uh did not enter the large model category oh, okay. and the kind of you know, also very good but the second best painter entered but actually got disqualified because their model wasn't quite big enough they entered a dreadnought really? they entered a dreadnought oh, and okay. and like i had judged is like okay the dreadnought wins the this category but then the mm-hmm. the person running the event came over and said, "I just looking at the fine print here. Dreadnought does not qualify as a large model. Like, ooh, that 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 shakes things up. That changes yeah. things up. Sucks for yeah. that guy. <laughs> so act actually, That's too bad. There was some tough competition for for first and runner up once you cleared out the uh, way too talented <laughs> members of the community. Yeah, yeah. And so." Yeah, and it was sure. a competition between a lot of models that each definitely had some flaws, but also like, ah, that's cool in that way. That's cool in that way. It's hard to choose. And mm-hmm. I think someone definitely could have second, just, second guessed my uh, my decisions on both of those. But yeah. l- luckily, no one, no one cared that much. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes yeah. down to it, yeah. yeah. No, the only time I've ever been asked about it, I mean okay to be fair the only time i've ever actually done like a f- tournament you know judging a painting competition it was like like no i i do this for a, a living like why didn't i win and i was like oh okay i like green it's not how this yeah. works <laughs> yeah <laughs> well you should have painted like, green because i really like green i don't know <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it is what it is but I still think about it <laughs> Yeah, yep, yep, yep. So, yeah, I don't know. it was a it was a good experience. I enjoyed it. Good. Glad That's glad cool. uh, a decent number of people did enter that little painting competition, and uh, mm-hmm. I got to give a lot of them some well deserved compliments. And yep, yep, yep. Anyway, that's what I did during the Ides of March event, which actually happened on the sixteenth and seventeenth of March, twenty twenty four. In case hmm. you were wondering, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. It's close. You gotta do as what close you as do. it could have been. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I assume that's like a a yeah. Saturday, Sunday, or something. Yeah, so <laughs> it's what it is. Like you can't, you can't always be right on. Yeah. Although I like to think one of the organizers was like stressing over it. You know, like ah, the Ides is on a it's on a Friday. I mean, we could run it on yeah. a Friday. Like a bunch of people are going to complain. Yeah. I like, can't get off a of word. <laughs> can't drive up from Boston on a Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I I bet you that conversation happened because they're like, "But it makes more sense this way." Like that's why we named it this, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's like, uh, "No, it's fine. Everybody gets what you're saying." Mm-hmm. But yeah. Mm-hmm. There's always those those people, you know, stressing over the those kinds of details. You can't you can't stress over these things, but no, no. I mean, next year, hey, maybe next year I'm judging, and Burt Mabers enters a piece at the old Ides of March hey. Golden Brush Painting Competition. 
but if you're judging Burt Maber seems like a pretty good painter. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. At least at least give yourself the rudder up spot. And be like, yeah, this is just it's too good. <laughs> hey, I don't know who did this. A uh, man with a beard dropped this off in the in the case right. this morning. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, no, that would great. be wrong, and mm. I would be embarrassed if I actually did that. I mean, I could bring a camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would be very embarrassed if I was caught doing that. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, caught doing it. Regrettable. And the winner is sure. Burt Mabers. Hold on just a second. Hold on. Like, yeah. <laughs> just a second. Yeah, I got to use the bathroom yeah, real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just throw on. Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe well, I it. I've got an incredible honor. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> damn all right oh man what else we got going on casey um oh i was going to mention that uh with those gretchen that i'm painting i am going to be using good old like dollar or no no i'm sorry not dollar but pound 25 uh citadel paints from the early 90s the goblin green and the putrid green you know yeah, I got some. I got some bottles from somebody. Uh, they shipped me a bunch of them, and they're still. I can hear it. That's yeah. coming through great. Still liquidy and delicious. And holy crap, the coverage on Goblin Green yeah. is really good. <laughs> like what? A, a single yeah. coat, no problem. I, I I don't know. I'm very surprised. They just don't make them like they used to, huh? I guess not. But. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm super excited to be using that because it, it it does actually look really good. It's like a really, uh, like desaturated green, but with really good coverage. So you just it just goes on, and then you kind of do some other stuff to it. And it's like, oh yeah, no, that that works really well. And of course, the classic goblin green bases, right? Like they just it just looks proper. It just looks so yeah. good. So that's yeah. hard coded. I'm pretty excited about yeah. that. Yeah, 69 of those sitting on the table. That sounds pretty good. Um, I also just, like, on a whim, I sat down because I was painting those Minecraft minis, and I just got out a bunch of, like, half-painted models that have been sitting on a shelf for the last eight years, I think. Yeah. Um, and I painted, like, a bunch of leather straps on some Chaos Dudes and uh, painted myself up one of those Swamp Orcs, you know? I actually really like the Swamp Orcs. They work really well um, the cruel boys we yeah. all need to get back into that <laughs> I, I i have every cruel boys model that's been made in multiples you would yeah i would because they are so cheap <laughs> on ebay <laughs> you know that's that's something about this uh the times that we're living in we are coming to the end of this edition of age of sigmar oh my god we're coming to the end of the dominion box and uh, that's true i i do feel a little bit bad about that mm, um memories i mean it's it's yeah. settled it's settled the price it's not wavering okay you know it's 110 a box that's where we're at all right well we uh, we'll keep an eye on it, and we'll see how many years into fourth edition Age of Sigmar that we can keep the Dominion box less than its original MSRP. <laughs> I mean, I might, I still don't or three years think it will ever guess. actually go up <laughs> because even then, I mean, there okay, the overall but... prices keep on going up and up and up, and eventually, the few. If you do the calculation of how many squads you get in there, like it, it pretty good deal. Yeah. yeah, I mean it is like they still don't sell some yeah. of them individually. Like you have to buy them in a pack that's more than what you could get them for individually online. Of course, it's, it's really bad. Of course, um, but yeah, fourth edition uh, going to be announced, or it will have been once this episode's out. But for us, in a in a couple days, maybe. Uh. I, I mean it is okay cool it, it, it cool, cool 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 and, and it looks like at least from the promos they've been thrown out it looks like skaven yeah I've, I've heard so, the i mean rumblings. i am a little bit happy about yeah, that yeah yeah. yeah yeah underground sewer rumblings oh, yeah. um but i mean if they do a dominion style 
box that is on the same like quality level and like even if it's push fit you know and they just overly produce all of them and you know they're giving them away at adepticon next and they may year. have learned their I mean, lesson on that yeah maybe maybe i don't know i hope not <laughs> yeah the future is uncertain we'll we'll see about that one i know yeah. Yeah, well, and we'll, and we'll keep a tracker going for the next couple of years as that gets going, because yeah, that's what we do. That's what we do. Um, yeah. Are you are you planning on playing any games this year at Adepticon? You gonna I'm gonna bring, bring I'm gonna bring some Relic Blade minis. Um, I don't know if I'm yeah, actually yeah. gonna find the time to play, but I'll I'll be ready in case anyone challenges me to a battle, like a you know, mm. like a like a Pokemon mm-hmm. trainer with my. My battle pigs in tow, maybe some, maybe some giblins, you know. <laughs> Come up to you, yeah. Want, want, Bird neighbors at you. Want a battle? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Want, want a battle? <laughs> you will never survive yeah. against my axe pig. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Somebody please say that, please. I just, I just want that to happen. I was gonna, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna put this episode do, out I, early, so do, yeah. Maybe someone will no. without without the instructions, though. It's possible. It's possible. I mean, yeah, that is possible. Yeah. Just bust out a battle pick out out the back pocket and yeah, throw it down. Yeah. So something else that's on the radar here is uh, this is from Archon Studio. This is a pre-painted sprue, and mm-hmm. I had a chat with uh, Yark, the CEO, and he. He told me how they do this. That's uh, it is an inkjet printer, like a flatbed inkjet printer that uses UV curing ink, and yeah, it's little jots, little dots of cyan, yellow, magenta, and black on mm-hmm. on these models, and yeah, it's a decent prepaint. Um, I don't know. Folks have been talking about it. There's there's a campaign that might be closed by the time this airs. I don't know, but um, yeah, it was, it's interesting to see what computers and technology can do these days with uh, with printing minis. But there's yeah. there's a few technical limitations, like the the angle of the plastic with the inkjet, like like oh, it can't sure. do yeah. you know uh, bits that are perpendicular to mm-hmm. the the plane of the the sprue but it can do things that are at a pretty good deal of slant and it's got about like a little more than a one inch height that it can that it mm-hmm. can do so i am curious to see where this technology goes and i probably will make a whole video on that so we don't need to we don't need to get deep into it but that's just yeah. One of the other things that's a that's a news item right now is Dungeons and Lasers Six, the Caves Kickstarter, or whatever it is, Game Found campaign, yeah. and and pre painted, pre painted, um, just because yeah. it's it's relevant. I actually saw an ad and I it like disappeared because Facebook is stupid sometimes, but um, it was a pre painted model. Okay. But not paint. It was like that. It was, you know, printed. Printed, yeah. Printed, painted. Yep. You know, um, and their whole advertisement was this model is not actually painted, but it's full color, mm-hmm. and it looked just like that. It's like that the little dots and yep. you know makes everything up, and it kind of got me thinking. Like, even if they could do that on like a very low level, mm-hmm. just like simple color in an area. Hey, look at that! It's like base coated, like having that as a as a like a paint by numbers guide to separate the pieces yeah probably would alleviate some some serious work in like if if you're just trying to get stuff out for gaming oh if if you could get if you could get a base coat of like a properly colored base coat and you just like get your layers on and slightly yeah yeah pretty much yeah that'd be interesting um yeah, I mean, I, I can see that this stuff could go pretty far. And I mean, even with that terrain, yeah. you know, you, you throw colors over the top of the colors that are there, mm-hmm. similar colors. If you miss something, it doesn't really matter. And then you throw a dry brush on there and it's like, yeah, this looks really good now. Yeah, I like that you idea. Know, it's it's not pre-painted, but it's paint by numbers. Those like giant canvas paintings where each piece is broken up with the little number and you get the little bottle and you take it uh-huh. like number 72. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. I, I see yeah. it going far. Well, this is 
just another way to give a leg up to, you know, especially the RPG players who just might be a little bit model curious and just anything yeah. you can just do to push them a little bit farther down that path. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the barrier to entry is certainly getting better all the time. Yes. And and that kind of stuff is awesome. Hmm. I agree. Uh, I got my fancy pants Stormbringer box. Ooh. I finally, I finally got it. The, uh, what is like, like month five or something. I don't remember, mm -hmm. but I mean it, you got your premium dragon? set one. Yes. It's a full Crondice, Crondice, Old model, yeah. which is like, like 150 bucks on its own. Uh -huh. Um, so I mean, so far I feel like I'm I'm ahead of the the game money wise. It's still not cheap per month, and I'm gonna see this through because I said I would. <laughs> but uh, yes, they sent a Crondus in a box. I appreciate you and checking in on this sweet. issue. Yeah, the people want to know. Really, I just don't want to call them to cancel, and I know that was their game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I they know, know what it. they're doing. So yeah, yes, it's much better to lean into it than. <laughs> To make Hello, is this call. a Stormbringer head office? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dickheads. <laughs> I wonder if you yeah. call if they give you like a special offer of like that. That's yeah, like probably even is. more confusing than the the online written out thing. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Well, if you order now, you I'll throw up. in yeah some Gretchen, you get some, I don't know, some lads. I mean, they they could get me with that too. It would. I mean, I do that. I do that with my like uh, Audible. Yeah. Right. Like it's like, oh man, I ran out of credits. Let me just fake cancel for a minute, and they're like, no, 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 free book on us. You just do that like every two or three months. You get a free book. Am I blowing your mind? You didn't know that? You just saved me fifteen bucks every couple of months. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Heck yeah. It's great. <laughs> my man. Yeah, you got you just start start the cancel process. And they'll, they'll, you know, ask you a bunch of questions, try and get you to stay. And then they will give you offers. Like usually, usually they'll give you a couple. So you gotta, you gotta wade through the garbage, right? And they're going to be like, how about 10% off? They're like, no, no deal. I don't want that. Yeah. No deal. Yeah. yeah. And then the next one will be like, can we give you free credits and will you stay? And then you say yes. And you get your free credit, you download your book and then you cancel it anyways. These are the hobby tips you need. Because you need something to listen to while you paint because we're almost done with this episode of Paint Brave the Podcast and then you're going to need like, a, like an audio book or something. I mean, that's true. Yeah. Maybe we should maybe we should be recommending audio books. That actually... What to listen to when Paint Bravely is caught up on in two weeks away. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, or you always got to have a book going. Always gotta have a book going. That's true. That's true. I'm on. A, I'm on a dumb kick though right now. Like that uh, Percy Jackson show came out on Disney. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to remember which one's per Percy Jackson. Is it Golden Compass? What's who's Percy Jackson? <laughs> Percy Jackson's the the Greek one. He's the demigod kid. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing. No. <laughs> All right, well, keep trying. All yeah. right. <laughs> no, there's a it, you know it's, it's Harry, Harry Potter. Yes, through a like, came out around the same time. No. Is it Nar Narnia, close, close, little, little yeah. bit. It's, 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 it's like hidden Narnia. You know, it's there. Um, but yeah, like the show came out, and I was like, oh man, like I I never read these books when I was younger, and they might be good for later for for my kids. So like. I got the first one and it's not very long. And so I blew through all of them in like a week. And now I'm, I'm still going on this like series that they have. Huh. So I don't know. They're, they're not like written for adults at all. No, I bet those are pretty short <laughs> audio books actually. Like you, you're going to be, they are, they're like 10 hours yeah, long. You'll yeah. You'll be dropping a lot of $15 audio books on that one. Yeah. I had I uh, had some credits, Zach you know? Zach I mean, Efron I somehow involved. Like I'm no to put this together. No, not at all. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was uh, JTT, you know. That's, right, that's right. It's all coming back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> free Willy facts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think JTT was in Free Willy. No, or, or no, free Willy he wasn't. Too. 
But no. they got a, they got like a knockoff version. Like they got a <laughs> yeah, the discount, discount JGT. JGT. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of those these days. The actors are just discount so and so. It's crazy. Kirsten Dunst's husband is discount Matt Damon. Seen that guy? Looks just like Matt Damon from Breaking Bad, but he's not. Is he? Is he in Breaking? Bad? Is that who we're talking about? The. Uh... I mean, if he looks like Matt Damon and he's not Matt Damon, then yeah, it's the same guy. All right. Well, you learn something so new you every know. day. You know, you tune yeah, in to us, yeah. you learn something new. And I got I got one more hot fact for you if you need something to listen to. <laughs> Life after the cover save, it's back, baby. Mm-hmm. If you want to listen to some, some old grognards talk about <laughs> the problems that they have in life other than us, um, you can listen to your mm-hmm. friends Ed and Blake and Travis and... Um, mm-hmm. Man, when my they'd been gone for like a couple of years, and then my podcast app it, yeah. like updated, and like the weird little exclamation point went away, and a good exclamation point popped in in its place, and uh, <laughs> boom, new episodes. L A T L A T C S. Life after the cover save. There you go. Mm, 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 mm. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. comedy gaming podcast. Yeah. yeah. Now I'll have to bug those guys about getting the twenty sided realms back in action. You know, no, no pressure, but I, uh, I mean, <laughs> no, no pressure. It's yeah. it, it's the same crew. No. It's like the the funny people from the twenty sided realms. So it's twenty sided realms minus me, uh, and they've got a podcast called <laughs> Life After people. the Cover Save, where they talk about. Uh, I don't know what they talk about these days, but well, at least in the, in the new episode, it was it was playing Warhammer games. Oh well. Yeah. I, gotta, yeah, I listened to, to half of one of the new episodes and it was uh, mm-hmm. just about their problems, which was fun to listen to, but uh, I, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they don't need to be talking about anything specific for me to care, but to get new listeners, maybe they do need to be talking about Warhammer games. I don't know. I mean, that's, that's possible. Mm-hmm. They might be on a... Mm-hmm on search for that yeah they're doing that all right well anyways thank you again for joining us on another episode of paint bravely if you enjoyed this podcast please help us out by leaving us a review on itunes subscribing to the youtube channel and sharing this message with your hobby friends and as always we appreciate each and every one of you for listening and we will talk to you next time Bye.